Hey, what's up? And in this multi-part tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through the creation of this matte painting for my Titan series. In this first part, I'll be going over the painting phase. So let's go ahead and get started. I start out with a sketch for this to just kind of get an idea of where I wanted to go with this because sometimes in more complicated pieces, sketching for five to ten minutes can uh, help you point in the right direction. And then for the sky, just taking a nice uh, medium blue and darkening, darkening it towards the top and it gets brighter as it gets towards the horizon. And this happens because as you look towards the horizon there's going to be a lot more atmosphere so things are going to become more desaturated and a little bit grayer and brighter. And then taking a quick mask with Q and a radial gradient and dragging it from the corner there and using curves with control M and brightening it up to kind of uh, adjust the sky and looking at a few references there to kind of help get the idea of uh, what a Chinese landscape could look like because that is kind of part of the inspiration I did for this was Chinese mountains are very big and uh, beautiful and they're really uh, fun to paint. And then sampling up the sky and using that chalky brush I use in pretty much all my landscapes. And then bringing in a slightly warmer green to adjust as it gets closer to the camera for atmospheric perspective. And I don't have to spend a long time on this stage of the painting. I, I do want to get all the lighting and colors down to kind of help guide when I do bring in the photo elements because you do want your photos to conform to what you made and not just building around the photos. And bringing in the foreground, things get much darker. And having a, a nice silhouette against a brighter background because you do want to watch for contrast. Light against dark really helps set things apart. Continuing in with the foreground here. And you'll notice I'm just going along the sketch and very roughly um, dotting in colors, you know, adjusting things for lighting and adding in some dark tones and variations in the color. And then I took another soft brush and darkened down that area in the valley there because there isn't really much going to be any light down there. It's going to be blocked off all by the mountains on the side and as well as the elemental. And for the lighting for this, I did one a little bit later afternoon so I could have some of those warmer yellows and variations in color. And it allowed me to do more with um, shadows. Just very roughly doing the cliff area here. I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do with that just yet. I did know I wanted to have a figure standing there. I didn't really know what would go on top of the landscape there and sometimes you don't always know until later in a painting. You know things just kind of build on their own. Things take shape and you can build off of new things that pop up. And then doing the face on the left there. And this side is going to be facing the sun. So I wanted that area nice and bright and warm. And then I had a little space for a waterfall coming out. And just adding uh, water flowing can help add uh, dynamics to your painting. You know, it just breaks things up with uh, different types of things going on in your environment. And 
And here I'm quickly starting the elemental. Um, I did have some trouble with this at the start. Um, once I started filling in my sketch, it just didn't look quite right. And that's that's another thing that can happen when you sketch is that when you do start filling it in with color, um, suddenly having this more filled in look will throw off things in ways you didn't expect. So you kind of have to be able to adjust to that. It might not always look right once it's filled in. And I'm just trying to figure out how this elemental is formed. I didn't really want to go the the full big hulking uh, earth elemental. I, I wanted the more um, scattered rock approach where everything is kind of connected by some sort of energy. And in this case for my elementals, um, if you've seen the past couple videos, all of them have cores to them. So I was, I was thinking to have kind of them all be binded together by the core. And going back to my mountains, and I'm adding shadows to uh, these sides of the mountains because there isn't going to be really any light falling on this side. There will be fill light, of course, but not any direct sunlight. And again, just very quickly filling in the valley area. And you'll notice that a lot of the things form by the direction that I'm painting. When I was doing the valley there, the cliff wall I painted vertically, and then doing the mountain sides, I'm painting kind of at the angle with the mountain. And just adjusting how your brush strokes lay really help sell the idea that, okay, this is a mountain rising up and or this is a flat piece of land. So it, it really is important to uh, which way you paint with the brush. And a good way to kind of show distance is uh, for flat land is holding shift and uh, dragging. It'll create a straight line. So as things get farther away, doing those in little strokes can help set things back in the distance. And a lot of the middle is going to be covered up by the elemental, but I did want to completely fill things in. That way I know exactly how this landscape is going to be. And in a real map painting, a lot of times the camera will be panning, so you can't always get away with uh, letting things go. And just taking a brush from my set for clouds and just quickly dotting them in. And again, I'm not spending too much time on any one section here because it is going to be uh, covered up by photos in most cases. Again, looking at my references just to kind of get a refresher of where I want to go with this. Now I'm adding in some warmer tones for the time of the day. Adding some more dark to those middle mountains there. I wasn't really happy with how those were sitting. It was just kind of a big line of mountains. So I was trying to break that up a little bit by adjusting how uh, the edges. And flipping the canvas can be good because it just refresh how things look to you. And then there will still be light falling on that side of the mountain there. And by now I've got a lot of a color palette set up so a lot of times I can just sample off the canvas directly and a quick way to sample is just by pressing Alt with the brush tool selected, you can quickly sample colors. You'll notice that 
the brush turns into a little eyedropper and it brings up that ring if you're using uh, Photoshop CS6. Going back to the foreground and darkening it some more. I'm going back to the elemental a little bit. And I was thinking about using what I started there as a base and trying again because sometimes that does help getting a, starting something rough and then going back over it with a finer detailed attempt can sometimes yield better results. But in this case it wasn't really working out for me. Just it looked a little bit like a snowman at this point. It's just kind of blobby and not great. So I went back to my first try and worked at it some more. I'm adding shading, trying to adjust how it's sitting to add variation to it and try to get the look that I was going for. And it is starting to come together now, getting those darker middle sections. And I was thinking, okay, this big crease in the middle here could be where the core sits. And adjusting the head, because I want it to be kind of looking down at the figure that's going to be standing there. And my last couple uh, elementals were a little bit more violent, but I did decide to go with a more peaceful one for this particular painting. And partially because Earth is more sturdy and steady in things and not prone to lashing out quite as much. And originally for this painting I wanted to do something in the snow, but then I was thinking yes, about the elemental itself and I wanted to have growth on its back. So I completely switched it up and went for a more jungle setting. And you'll see now I'm adding some greenery to it. And uh, having it all in one layer does come back against me later because I did add, have some issues getting rid of that. So for the amount of layers you should use, you should use uh, what you feel comfortable with. If you feel that you can get all the detail you need to in uh, one layer or just a couple, then go ahead and do it. But when you're matte painting, you want to be able to swap out things with the photo elements later. And if things need to be parallaxed, then you'll definitely want to break things up. And what parallax basically is, is how things seem to move faster when they're closer to you and slower when they're farther away. So like when you're in a car and you're just driving and the side of the road is whizzing by and the mountains in the distance are just kinda gradually going, that's, that's what parallax is. And adding in some bigger rocks for the base. I don't want it to be expanding outwards as it moves down. Just adding uh, darker sides and lighter sides. And again, just taking my chalky brush and painting in the direction that I want the details to sit. And adding some uh, bright faces as they're facing the light. Some cracks in there and variations in the rock. Going back to the foliage, adding some more trees in there. And this would probably be some pretty big trees because 
it, it is a pretty big elemental in comparison to the landscape, so you can have some gigantic growth on there. And adding uh, some eyes in there. And this is where the core comes into play, just having this energy flowing throughout the entire elemental. Just little hits of green, and then having the main core in the center chest cavity there. Putting a new layer and putting it on linear dodge creates some of those brighter areas and again going in with that brush I use for clouds. And if you've watched my last video with the fire elemental, I do have a link to the brush pack which contains that brush in there. Just adding in some more finer details. And I did add some uh, higher detail to the elemental because this was part of the painting that I knew that I wasn't just going to be able to grab photos out of. Um, I could add real textures to it, but I wouldn't be able to just take like a, a picture of a rock and just mold it to this. So I, d I did go a little bit longer in this part of the painting. Mainly because I was going to have to do a lot more higher detail painting to it later on. And that's also part of what matte painting is. It's, it's not just taking photo elements and slapping them on the canvas. It's, it's also mixed in with painting. Because you have to be able to make those photo elements look like they belong there and fill in gaps. And uh, for stuff you can't find photos for, you sh need to be able to paint to be able to match um, the rest of the painting. And I'm just quickly roughing in a, a little figure. I'm not exactly the best at drawing people, so it's kind of doesn't look great, but it works for now. Just trying to test out different uh, positions for the figure. Maybe having a little cane or and reaching out. And just quickly dotting in some lighting on the back. Because I, I did want to have light pouring in from the side there and kind of falling onto the figure to kind of help draw the viewer's eyes to what's going on in this painting. And you'll notice a lot of the mountains, they all kind of uh, fall into the center area here. So it, it helps draw the viewer's eye. And now I'm adding in a few rocks for the arms. Now I'm using curves to darken down the uh, bottoms and back to the elemental. And Curves is a really powerful tool to quickly adjust uh, lighting in your piece and certain elements. And basically when you're using Curves, the left side is uh, darker um, colors and on the right side is brighter. So if, say you want to do a uh, linear darkening of something, you just drag the top right point down and it'll darken everything evenly. And you'll see me do that quite a bit. And another thing you can do with that is a adjustment layer to uh, adjust huge sections of your painting. And curves also let you do uh, channel adjustments. So you have your red, uh, blue, and green channels. 
and by adjusting individual things on there, um, say you wanted to shift things towards red, you would go into the red channel and say place a dot in the middle of the line and slightly drag it up, you'll notice that suddenly things take on a more red shift. And going back to the painting here, just detailing the hand and adding in some uh, finishing touches to the lighting there. And that just about wraps up this stage of the painting. So in the next stage, I'm going to be going through the fellow elements of this painting and really bring in all the matte elements and showing how to kind of paint to fill in sections that I couldn't with uh, photos. And, and then in the third part, I'll be going towards detailing the elemental itself. So that'll do it, and stay tuned.